Hello. Hello, uh, everyone, and welcome hello. to the 7.30 to 8 a.m. session of the 2023 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation. Lone Wolf has been programming since he was 16 for over 40 years. He has built a number of major systems and Wolf Territories Grid is one of his biggest. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the sessions, and the full schedule of events. The, the session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC23. Welcome everyone. Let's begin the session. Hi there. Um, it's, it's a real pleasure to be here. I feel a bit out teched by the first um, session, which is really interesting. Um, so I'm the owner of Loaf, Wolf Territories Grid. And um, I'm going to talk a bit about what it is. We are the largest by land area um, open sim grid we're, since last month. Um, we uh, are now, uh, it's, we're about 96% the size of Second Life in terms of land area. And I've just put this building cloud storage, which is quite um, to avoid space problems with assets. And we're running in a very big plus, Proxmox cluster. Whew. Um, so just to give you an idea there, you can see that when it comes to storage, we're using 0% of our available space, um, but it's not as simple as all that. So this is another little diagram just showing about how we're doing it. We have about 26,000 um, equivalent Second Life regions, and they, our whole grid is joined together. So you can actually get from one end to the other. You can sail or fly. Generally, it sort of works um, from one end to the other. It's very, very fast. Um, so it doesn't matter how um it doesn't matter what sort of vehicle you've got some vehicles of course have something in the script that stops you going we have um and and we can sort that out anyway twenty six thousand regions joined together you can spend hours getting lost and exploring i'm always really excited when our users we have 800 users and uh, when they build something new and that happens a lot where they can go loan you should have a look at this um so, but to do that and to have that infrastructure has required some rewrites of some parts of it. Our asset services, for instance, we don't use the built-in asset service. We have our own asset services that talk to um, Cloudflare. Some of the assets are actually, that you get directly from the grid will actually be delivered from a local server to you. So if you're in the States, when you first request certain things from the grid, instead, instead of it coming, it'll come from our our servers in Germany, and then it'll be bounced off the servers in the States. So that makes it real quick to get things down. Um, uh, so on top of the whole base of OpenSim, which is incredible, and it's really an honor to be here with the, with the guys who are like, basically behind it, um, we have a whole stack of other things as well, because obviously um, to manage the amount of servers we have takes a lot more than just um, the standard OpenSim package or even using anything else of course all our um all our regions are running on linux our whole grid is running on linux mostly debian 11 some we use some ubuntu servers as well for certain things so we have the equivalent of 26,848 second life sims we get about 4,300 visitors per month um, but that's going up all the time and um we're about i think we're about 200 visitors a month behind os grid but we've only been going for three years, which is why we haven't got that many registered users. Um, we have a web control panel, which you can see on the right hand side of this slide, and that has some real cool tech in it. So our users, for instance, when you buy a region, you can go into there and use the terrain generator and click and click and it will randomly generate a terrain for your region. You click a button and bang, you've got beautiful mountains and they're all unique because it's randomly generated. It took me about three months to write that. The other things you can do is from through our control panel, you can do things like changing your region name, change. We have Globits and Podex, so you could choose a grid currency. You can uh, change the physics engine. You can scale your region. So if you need more resources, you can see how your region is doing in terms of user RAM and processor. Um, you can restart your region. You can update your map. You can see the console of your region, but it's all done through a web control panel. Now that's actually more complicated than it looks because obviously we've got all these servers. So being that we've got like 11 region servers, one, your region will be sitting somewhere on one of those servers. So when you hit like 
update map or restart region, the grid infrastructure has to go and to go and find your region on your server, log into it, act, do what you need to do, and then leave it there. It has taken an awful lot of crying and pain to do that. And, and getting the latency going for, um, for this type of grid has been very, very hard. There is a point where you cannot just run with standard OpenSIM because you, when you get above a certain number of regions is what we found. When we got to about 400 regions, uh, I started having all kinds of problems and latency issues and things were really slow. We had issues with region crossings and teleporting. And actually, it was all down to one thing. I thought it was down to the actual regions themselves because it wasn't all the regions. It was down to database latency. Um, so what we have is we have three database services in a, cl in a cluster. And what that basically means is that two of them can blow up and the other one will still carry on. And the way they're, they're run, it, uh, they also get backed up every night, obviously, onto the cloud storage. But it just means it's really, really stable in terms of database latency. But database speed, the speed at which your grid access the database affects everything else. Um, and that was the one thing that took a long time to learn because it did look... We have a re region on our grid with 120,000 prims, and he's got about 16,000 scripts running on it. And he said it's the first time he's ever had, um, and it's actually an eight by eight. And he's the first time he said it's the first time in 10 years we've had it running properly. Um, so that was really interesting. So uh, good. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Where's the button there? Okay, so a uh, bit about our asset servers. So, <laughs> um, so the beauty of having Cloudflare R2 storage is that our assets are stored on masses and masses of servers don't know how many cloudflare don't tell us um, but that gives us about 10 petabytes of available space if we ever need it you pay by the amount of space and transfers you do in the first month we we ran our cloudflare uh, asset storage it worked really brilliantly but it cost 280 dollars which is an awful lot to store your assets uh, so i rewrote the asset service so that it actually utilizes the way that um object storage works. If you've not heard about object storage or what it is, it's a really cool way of storing things where you write it once and read it a lot of times. So for instance, YouTube videos, YouTube use it, um, and different types of storage and assets are perfect for it because of course we write them once and then we read them a lot of times. Um, and by re, re, um, redoing that, we use DNS load balancing. What that means is we've got a pile of asset servers and it just randomly chooses one because it's a very fast uh, movement. So, yes, so we use, and using Cloudflare's constant delivery network. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Okay. So, um, Crystal Frost Viewer, for those of you who don't know, we're involved in that. Um, we, um, Bobby is helping me as well. Uh, Bobby's RAI robot. He's actually part of the infrastructure. I'll talk a bit about him in a minute. Um, we are a part of the developers group with Crystal Frost Viewer which is something coming out and they've got, um, and also we've got, we are working with a lip. It's a tiny weeny web company called dream hosting AC, but she has direct links into the data center. So we get our stuff. We can spin up servers very quickly. We get really amazing support. Um, and, um, so we are all, everything's just really cool. I remember when she first arrived, I was running my, um, uh, when we started, we only had like a hundred regions. I was running on, um, like nine servers at Contabo, and anyone who's used Contabo is absolutely brilliant until you have to raise a ticket in your servers down. And she arrived on my region and said, would you be interested in um, moving to my little hosting company? Because I've got, you know, I've got direct contact with the people in the data center and I can look after you. And she's been absolutely brilliant. And we moved to her due to a disaster because we all know what they're like, hosting disasters. Okay, so next thing. Okay, so Bobby. Bobby is our uh, chat GPT-4 AI. Now, he's, it's not quite as simple as just connecting um, the grid to chat GPT-4. We have a, a big database and all kinds of things going on in between him to maintain contexts. Because normally with chat GPT-4, if you, 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 you connect something to it, it won't remember things that you've said to it before. So I'm going to just um, talk to it now. So Bobby, hello. Now, the other thing about Bobby is Bobby knows all about the uh, the grid. He won't work properly on this grid. As you can see, he's lying down for some reason. I don't know why. Um, we actually have our OpenSIM modified to support him. Um, and he's very tired because he's had a long day. So 
let's Bobby. So Bobby knows all about Wolf Territory's grid. OK, we do actually sell Bobby to other grids, but there is a price for him because we have to do a lot of coding and teaching him all about your grid. So, Bobby, where should I buy a Ford Mustang? OK, so we're going to ask him a simple kind of question. I've no idea why he's lying down. He's never done that before. Silly boy. So you can ask him a question. He does take a little while to think about it because obviously it's AI. So he suggests um, Blindside Motors, which is a fantastic place to buy them. And he even gives you how to search in Firestorm um, and where to get the data. And in fact, it, that link at the bottom there is actually him saying it. So what we can also do is say, Bobby, tell me <laughs> that in French. OK, and he'll remember what what he just said to me and that I'm talking to him about this. So if you go and talk to him today and come back tomorrow, he'll remember what you talk to him about to an extent. They obviously won't remember everything. It depends. We we will expand that in the future. But for now, that's what he's doing. So there he goes. So he's now told me the same thing in French. Um, so now, yep, if you ask him a question. So he's just gone to Rhiannon because she's asked a question. So he's now thinking about that in the middle of my demonstration, Rihanna. Right. <laughs> so he writes he writes scripts as well. Bobby, uh, write me an LSL script to. OK, guys, if you. Yeah, there you go. So he's answered your question. He is on a percentage, of course, but Bobby actually does some stuff with the grid itself. OK, but if you want to try Bobby out, you can go to our welcome area. And there's one there for you. To, he's he's there. And you can have a lovely chat with him. OK, good. I'm going to move on. Um, I, I might show you. There we go. So he's, you can see he stacks the questions. Poor love. Over overworked and underpaid. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to go back again. I just wanted to show you in writing scripts. To change. Build a box. Uh, let's see. Uh, to change the color of a box in LSL, you have to tell him what language you're writing in. He has been used. Um, Jimmy Olsen's got a huge space area on um, on our grid. We have a huge sci-fi area. It's like 150, 130, 100, no, 160 second life regions made. It's different people who've got sci-fi regions and they're all kind of together and uh, he had a problem with the script and he asked um he asked bobby to to fix it and he did so which is kind of exciting so um there you go so so this is a little script here that he's just written and uh, i i can it's just very simple i'm just going to quickly res a little box make a new script i'm going to grab the script that he's just written And I'm just going to paste it in there. Hit save. It's a really simple script. He'll write more complicated scripts if we need him to. I'm just going to click on it. And there it randomly changes color. So there you go. So that's a bit of Bobby. Uh, Bobby is part of our infrastructure. He actually monitors the grid as well. Um, and he knows, for instance, which are the busiest regions. And he knows where to find things. So um, you can ask him questions about that sort of thing. And he is trained to learn about our grid as as um, people use it. So that little box there, that was that script was written by AI. And I can even do things like um, Bobby. How do I make an omelette in the style in the style of Yoda? Okay, because he knows all about Star Wars, which is really good. I don't have no idea why he's lying down. He's never done that before, but I think it just might be. Um, <laughs> it might just be because he's tired, poor love. He's had a long day and he's come a long way. So chilling. Yeah, he's chilling. I don't know why. He's never done that before. <laughs> just wait a second for him to do that. So I'm um, talking a bit about how he's going to be working in the future. Is he's, uh, yeah, he's timed out. That's partly because of he's running on a foreign grid and it doesn't have the, the stuff he needs to do it. So I've got five minutes remaining, so I'm going to do any questions. Any questions? Well, Lear asks the, the question I just asked him. He will answer it, but 
um, the timeout thing is because we have to set a thing. So are there any questions? Do come and visit us at Wolf Territories Grid. Um, the website I'll put in chat, it's HTTPS, go on wolfgrid.com um, and the land is at uh, grid.wolfterritories.org 8002. Yeah, he's probably, he probably needs, um, so he probably is, he's, he hasn't got, it's complicated. There's a reason why he's doing that to do with the region itself, but do come over, you can come over to the grid itself. <laughs> That's a very good question. I know what he thinks. He'll even tell you what to feed me. Yeah, that we we have it's it is beautiful. Some of the some of the regions there are really, really huge and, and Luna's go and see Luxor as well. Luxor is incredible. It's something I always take people to see. I go and visit it about three times a week. Um there's Luxor, there's Luna's store as well, which is where we're visiting Wolf Mountain. There's the whole science fiction area, Europa which has been built by Jimmy Olsen. If anyone has trees on the region, the chances are Jimmy Olsen made those. Um, we've got uh, the Wild West area. So, um, yeah, basically, you're right, uh, Mal. Thanks for that comment. So, basically, um, we've got some AI that actually generates the, the mesh, the mesh land, the, the landscape terrains. So they're not mesh. They are, uh, they are actual real terrains. And you have to go and stand on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. It's, you can do that in our grid. Just go and land there. Go for a walk. You can get a free horse. Um, and they're quite well-behaved horses, even for beginners. And you could just ride for miles. There's there's trains running all over the place across regions. Um, there's shopping. Um, if you hit search, and we've got a destination guide as well, you can see what's going on there. You can ask Bobby what events are on, and he'll tell you where to find out. There's, there's all kinds of things to do. Um, and it's really grown. And we've just got some amazing people who've joined the grid and have built some just beautiful, beautiful things. <laughs> He'll answer that as well. I'm not sure what he's going to say to that. So, yeah, we've got the National Park yeah, up north. Um, Rhiannon, yes, basically. So what happens is when you click on a, you kind of go into your control panel for the region and you click a, click next and it kind of, it goes off and does a load of AI and maths and things and then comes back with the terrain and you click next and you just keep doing it until you find the one you like. You hit apply and literally it's on your region there and then mountains, rivers, everything. It's pretty unique. I mean, it took a lot of writing. <laughs> and the main issue actually was not so much the maths, but more the speed of it because it, some, the original one looked, took, took about uh, half an hour to actually generate the terrain. So, Okay, I've got a minute left. So, any other questions? <laughs> um, I am always available. I'm, I'm quite friendly, really. If people want to friend me and ask questions, that's cool. <coughs> um, otherwise, I think I think I'm done. Ah, oh, you wonderful session. I love Bobby too. We'll give him a round of, of applause. Thank you, Lone Wolf, for an informative and interesting presentation. We'll have to come out and visit. As a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out the conference.opensimulator.org to see what is coming up on the conference schedule. You won't want to miss our next session, which will begin at 8 a.m. in this keynote region, and it's entitled Open Simulator WordPress interface with W4OS. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 23 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on these presentations and to explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with our sponsor and our crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again, Lone Wolf, and to you, the audience.